host, Scotty Aceman. We're joined by one of the most popular comics and one of my personal favorites, Mark Nesbitt. Welcome to the show. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Now, Mark is a, uh, he was a runner-up last year in this very competition, another hard-working comic with a full-time job, doing gigs all the time. I love Mark's cadence. Mark, if you were born with this, you're very fortunate. How have you managed to get to the top in just a few years? Tell us your story. Oh, um, I'm not anywhere near the top, or I feel like it's been longer than three years also. It's very slow, it's a slow grind. Uh, and then just really just not giving up and ignoring bills uh, and real life for the most part. <laughs> And I'm not, I think he's trying to be funny right now, no, but you can't, no. That's pretty real advice, like, <laughs> just get through it, and then either eventually you'll go bankrupt and not have made it, or uh, homeless, or maybe you'll be fine and have an okay job and still didn't do it. But either way, who knows what's going to happen, but it's not going great so far. Well, it's, it's sound advice. I, I know he's being funny, but at the same time, it is a grind. There's no doubt about it. Now, I mentioned earlier that Mark... Uh, has been a runner-up in this competition before. He's done tons of hosting and headlining. What would you do with $3,000 and more importantly, the fame, if you were to win this competition? Uh, literally just pay the government money that I owe them. I owe them a lot of money. Um, they know about it, so it's not a surprise to you guys. And uh, yeah, I, the fame, I still probably have to work my job to pay that debt off, uh, but I'll do more shows, I hope. Well, I can't believe how honest. We finally found a comic that wants to speak the truth and doesn't want to be silly. And if you want to see Mark on the show, he's our poster boy. He's in our trailer. So check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Nesbitt. I got high before the show, which I shouldn't admit because there's judges and they're going to be like, well, this guy's a piece of shit. But it's like you wear t-shirts, I smoke weed. We're all just doing what we're comfortable with, right? Yeah. I don't need to impress. Well, I do need to impress a few of you people, but you know. do you smoke weed? That's amazing. You look like weed. Um, I uh, I love weed. My friends grow weed for dispensaries, and um, what they do is they make new types of weed. They'll take two existing types of weed and then somehow they mix them together with science and then it creates, you know, I don't know. And it creates a new type of weed. I honestly think they're just growing the same thing and being like, we did it. But I don't know, they let me name a weed for them sometimes. So we've got a new strain coming out in a couple weeks. I got two new names I've been working on. I want to run them by you guys, see which one you like more. Um, the first one, I call it Medusa. Because she can turn you to stone, like it gets you stone. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was a good weed name, right? I like the second one a little bit more. Um, I call it a woman driving in Saudi Arabia. Because that, cause that also gets you stoned. Uh, ugh, I know. A little bit, a little bit darker. <laughs> the first time I told that joke, a guy in the front row was like, whoa, too soon. And I was like, no, nah, they've been doing that a while. We... I think we're in the okay to talk about it. You are a technical writer and editor, yeah. and you've been doing this off and on. You've been doing stand-up off and on for a very long time. What's the journey been like? And tell us uh, some of your struggles and some of the, the victories. And because uh, it, it can be an emotional roller coaster, this stand up thing, right? Uh, yes, it can. Yeah, well, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I started last century in my 20s and I did it for a little while then. Uh, then I abandoned it for, um, you know, around 15 years because I became a single parent and she, my daughter didn't like babysitters. And, you know, I was upgrading and then I ended up in high tech working, you know, long hours and whatnot. So I just fell away from, from stand-up comedy for 15 years. And I think I returned, it was 2009. And I started out kind of sporadically in the first few years, but I've been doing uh, quite a lot of it in the last three years or so. And it feels, it's such a relief because I used to get, I know I used to have dreams all these 15 years when I wasn't doing 
comedy, I would have recurring dreams about you know, trying to get on a stage. So it actually was quite a relief when I got back on. Yeah, so my daughter had a baby a few months ago. We still don't know who the grandfather is. <laughs> Technically, I'm now a gilf. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, Polish and Ukrainian. Thank you. <laughs> In other words, I've fucked a lot of accordion players. <laughs> They have amazing fingers. <laughs> I have an accordion. <laughs> Just putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my last name is Polish. It's my maiden name. I kept it because, well, I, you know, don't buy into this patriarchal bullshit about uh, changing your name for a guy. When I uh, explained this to my daughter, she said, and also, Mom, you've never been married. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> We're now joined by one of Van City's most popular comedians. You can see this guy all over BC, and then some, <laughs> Sam Tawning. Welcome back to Rise of the Comics. Scotty Aceman, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm good, better now that I'm seeing you. Oh, well, I, I like that when the comics yeah. tell me that because it makes me feel good. I had anchovy pasta. Anchovy pasta, I made it at home. When, last night? I can't smell anything. No, right now, before coming over, I downed a little box of uh, Tic Tacs on the way over. Wow. Well, that's a smart yeah. comic, Tic Tacs. Now, Sam is a very well-respected joke writer in this town. Uh, we love him dearly, and uh, he's been getting Jones. a lot of great stage time. He's been making his opportunities happen. Let's yeah. talk about let's that. Let's do it. Let's do it, Scotty. Okay, let's talk about it. Yeah. Tell me. So, how, how, how is it going on stage? You're getting a lot of great opportunities. Let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you here. Getting on stage... It's the greatest thing in the world. The more you get on stage, the more opportunities you get to get on stage. So if you don't go on stage, you're not going to get any opportunities unless you buy those opportunities, Rise of the Comics. Um, it's going great. It's a lot of fun, yeah. And I appreciate it going up at Jericho. That was killer. In front of a crowd I was not expecting to, uh, you know. Oh, you'll see, I'm sure, yeah. Uh, well, we have seen. Now, Sam uh, Associate produces three amazing independent shows. The Comedy Shocker, yeah. The Brett Martin Show, yeah. And my favorite, Stand Up and Deliver. Yeah. How have you taken these three very different opportunities uh -huh. and used the experience to your advantage? Oh, man. Well, the Brett Martin Show is, uh, is just a riot. It's so much fun. It's A lot of it's in the moment, but it's a totally different beast than Stand Up. Um, the Comedy Shocker is great because it's like, i got to write new jokes for that every three months, and i got to come with new material, so the discipline's there. And then Stand Up and Deliver is every week I'm on stage hosting, doing spots, whatever, and it's a ton of work, but it's so much fun because I can always try out new stuff. It's the best. Yeah. Well, Sam, also, uh, you, you're a leader in the Vancouver comedy community. You, you've mentored me. Uh, you help a lot of other comedians out. Where do you see yourself in the next six months to a year? Uh, triple bypass. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm just doing more of the same. Why not? Well, you've been doing a lot more hosting, I've noticed, yeah. so I was yeah. thinking maybe... Uh, even more hosting, middling. I'd, I'd like that, sure. Yeah, host, middle staff at some clubs around town would be the best. Well, yeah. Sam Tawny, thank you so much for stopping Come on, by. Scott <laughs> I love it. Now, stay tuned. Coming up right now, Sam Tawny from Rise of the Comics Live. I think we all know old people are fucking, right? <laughs> We've all read the studies. Record levels of sexually transmitted diseases in retirement communities. <laughs> regularly. Yeah. 
All right, comes downhill from here. Uh, uh. You know what the fuck when you walk into one of these places and every door has a compression sock on the handle, right? So stupid. So tough. I've been in a long-term relationship before. One thing I've learned is the time goes on in a relationship, the sex better get weirder. Yeah, exactly. That's correct. spice things up in the bedroom. Her favorite was the whole stranger role play, you know? Like she get dolled up, go down to the bar, and fuck a stranger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> second favorite one was the whole nurse patient thing, you know? I know. She didn't like me when I came dressed up as Kathy Bates for misery. <laughs> together for 60 fucking years. You only imagine their sex life made 50 shades of gray look like frozen. <laughs> 60 years together, that is some kinky sex after 60 years, my god. Now also the same age you start forgetting things, you know? Like the safe word. Uh, that explains the broken hands in the older community. Sir, wearing sunglasses inside, so I assume <laughs> yes. I don't want to ask. Oh, man. I'd never be in a fight. I think it's because I look like I press charges, you know? Like, I'm not a very threatening looking guy at all. Like, it's hard to look threatening when you have the face of a Bollywood villain. <laughs> and the body of a white cab driver, you know? It's like, I'm gonna do an Uber gets in. I'm <laughs> fucked. I have a mustache right now. I don't know. I knew the mustache. I look like Pablo Escobar's fatter brother. <laughs> yeah, Pablo has candy bar, right? Uh, Pablo did Escobar. I don't know. I'm just. Uh, the only guy you go to if you need an after eight ball. It's not a disgusting joke, it's just a coke joke, but uh, yeah. Oh god. I've been in a weird mood lately, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I had to buy a mattress. That's a pretty big decision buying a mattress, you know? So it's not something you take lightly. So I went to the number one mattress retailer in all of Vancouver. You may have heard of it, it's called Value Village. Yeah. Give you a great deal on the mattress. They price matched the mattress to the number of stains on the mattress. Which is great, yeah. I don't know about you, but $300 for a twin is a pretty good deal, you know? I, I bought this mattress, I brought it home, I, I, I put it in my bedroom on the floor, obviously, because I'm going on a bed frame. And uh, the first thing I noticed that there was a hole in the middle of this mattress, right in the middle, you know? No I'm an inquisitive guy, so I went digging around for buried treasure. I pulled up this one single yellow pill. Oh. Yeah, exactly. I know some guys here know exactly what that pill is. So I, you know, I don't like to complain or anything. It wasn't the treasure I was looking for. So I just popped it in my mouth and went to sleep, you know? <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night. I was fucking that mattress, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It was on top. That's weird, right? You know, and, uh, I mean, the salesman said it was a pull-out, but... <laughs> did not pull-out at all. I'm not from Vancouver, I'm from the island. I moved to Vancouver. That, you are way too excited for that. That's, yeah. Getting excited for the island is like getting excited to go to Mission. It's uh, not good. years ago, I realized right away that people in Vancouver don't give a shit about anything unless it has to do with, like, kale or yoga or blaming the Chinese for high rent, right? And that's um, Is it racist if you do the Chinese voice? Is that racist? No, fuck you. Of course it is, you dumbass. Jesus Christ, go back to Porco Quillo. I don't know, man. That's ridiculous. Of course it's racist. 
racist. I know it's racist because I can't do it without squinting. Do it! No. Um, wow, that's a lot of $4 rent truck you're drinking there. Sandra Theater, I'm getting heckled, Francis. Drunk them in the front row wearing boots. Uh, wow, okay. That's okay. I don't know. Look, when I moved here, the first thing that happened to me, I got off the train downtown at Granville and George's. So I took a ferry over, right? First thing that happened, I locked eyes with a homeless guy jerking off. I know! He just didn't give a shit at all. Typical Vancouver, right? Couldn't care less, you know? So naturally, I couldn't finish. <laughs> I love jerking off. What can I say? I, know, so like, I love masturbating. I, I love a man enough to admit it. I'll jerk off anywhere, you know? Bedrooms, bathrooms, funeral. I don't give a shit. So I'm like, I'll just, I, my favorite place to masturbate is a plane, though. I love jerking off on planes, right? Like, I can count the number of times I've masturbated on a plane. It's easy. It's the number of times I've been on a plane. Uh, times two. Uh, yeah. I took a flight recently. I took a flight. I knew it wasn't going to be a good flight until I sat down. I opened the in-flight magazine and the pages were stuck together. I know! It's disgusting, right? My girlfriend was like, Sam, you know that's just juice, right? I was like, babe, come on. I don't come when I taste it. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyone here own a dog? Have any dog owners in the house? By applause. Who owns a dog? Yeah. I love it. Summer, so my favorite thing to do in the summer is to just walk around and look at dogs. My favorite, though, is when I see dogs with balls, right? I love it when I see dogs with balls. I just want to go play with them, you know? The, the dogs, obviously. Jesus. And the balls. I don't know. I, uh, we're to caution. Leathery to the touch, soft on the tongue. Uh, I know, right? Ladies, I know what it's like. Uh, it took me a while to realize the peanut butter is supposed to go on my balls. It's gross, I know. Uh, I'm from the island, I said that I'm... Anyone here ever been to Nanaimo before? Nanaimo, right? Yeah. And there's a shithole, right? Oh, you know? yeah. There's a reason why they call Nanaimo Surrey by the Sea. It's, uh... The Wally on the Water. Nanaimo is... Uh, way to pick of the West, ladies and gentlemen. It is horrible. Last time I went there, I went to a bar, and they, this bar was named Nanaimo Bar. Like, that's... Your city have to be that a tourist visits the only bar called Nanaimo. I don't know. It's just it bothers me. But I went to the bathroom in this bar, and there was a sign in there that said, "Pregnant women should not drink." Nanaimo City bylaw. Exactly. What kind of fucking city needs a bylaw telling pregnant women not to drink in the men's bathroom? You know? They got me thinking. What kind of sign do they have in the women? Right? Like, hey fellas, watch out! Whiskey dick is real! I don't know! Ow. From Yuck Yucks. Are you ready? Yeah. Third? Oh, let's redo that. Okay. Let's redo that. Test one, two, test, test one, two. Sweet. Very nice sound. But as soon as you come in, you're gonna go around here right away. Good job, and good luck to you. <laughs>